Hi everybody and Hello. welcome back to a fan favorite this side <laughs> this side Catherine Olsen everybody <laughs> I always say back by popular demand because it's true <laughs> I, every video I do with you Catherine is like inundated with comments on the live stream but also in the comments afterwards going when's Catherine coming back I love Catherine we should have her back more so um yeah well, you are I, I love back. I love talking about this stuff I love helping people and I've 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 made a I've connected with quite a few interesting people from doing these these videos and made some friends and I think it's really cool yeah, absolutely. I think look, we're all in this together. We've all got to help each other. And I think this is a really interesting topic and important as well. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm yeah. just looking at some of the comments we've got. Chris Shelton in the chat. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Thank <laughs> we you for just, joining. We were just having a chat today. So I invited him to come and say hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in a live stream. Chris is awesome. Um, if you guys haven't already, go check out Chris Shelton's channel. I did a video with him recently about the future. Did you see that? The future of Scientology. I see that yet. Video. So I that. it's no, it's fine. It's really interesting. Chris and I had a really in-depth chat about the end of Scientology and how even if it was made illegal tomorrow and the church had to shut down, that doesn't mean people are going to stop being Scientologists. We had a yeah. really good chat about it and how like the preservation project with CST and how, you know, these gold plates and titanium boxes are going to be there to stay. And whether we like it or not, you know, yeah, that's that's true. Scientology is here to stay. Um, yeah. So if you haven't already seen that video, go and check it out. It's really. Yeah, he's got some really interesting content. I was watching. I watched a lot of his videos before I before I left Scientology and left the Sea Org. And it was really, really helpful stuff. So yeah. Highly recommend it. Yeah, a hundred percent, which is a total Scientology thing that I noticed. I say so much since 100%. Nora on. Yeah, I don't know if you saw on what I think it was one of Aaron's videos or someone's. Nora um, was saying a hundred percent, and Aaron said a hundred, and there was a whole discussion. And then I realized I say it. There's totally a Scientology thing. A hundred percent. Yeah, I guess it is. But um, but yeah, it's it's actually an interesting thing to lead into what we're talking about today. So this is all about recovery and a project that I've been working on behind the scenes for some time. And I might be jumping the gun a little bit and um, announcing this a bit too early, but stay tuned because I'm going to talk about this project I'm working on. But it's all to do with recovery. And talking about Chris Shelton is actually really important because he was so integral and important to my recovery. When I, I came out of Scientology, I kind of went about my own life and did my own thing and didn't really think about it for many years. And it's only really in the last year or so that I realized it was still affecting me and have started that like recovery process. Yeah. Um, and Chris Shelton was actually the first former Scientologist I ever spoke to. Um, and so he helped me a lot just jumping on a Zoom. And the first chat I had with him was like, can I ask you a load of stuff about you know what happened to me and ethics and all of this and then the second chat we had I was like okay I've given that some thought I have some really specific questions about policies and about ethics and like what would happen if this happened and then this was applied and then like you know just Scientology related questions that were really irrelevant but helped me understand it a lot more in my head and um, he was a big big help and I think talking to someone else who's been through a similar experience is really helpful um, so massive uh, massive thanks to Chris for that but it's something that we are all going through ourselves and we all need to help each other yeah I think we also connected through him didn't we Yes, I believe yeah. so. Um, yeah. yeah, I watched your interviews with him on his channel and yeah. um, reached out because I heard your story and I was like, I want to talk to Catherine. She seems awesome. And yeah. I'm glad I did because you've been yeah, on my channel many times. And, Thanks, and people Chris. love you. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's awesome. Um, so let's talk a bit about recovery. Um, obviously, the Aftermath Foundation exists to help people leave Scientology and escape Scientology and it very much helps people land on their feet um, and I think maybe let's start a bit about talking about that because they massively helped you Catherine I know a lot of people will yeah. know this but do you want to maybe talk a bit about how you left Scientology and how the Aftermath Foundation came into play like how did you hear about them what did they do what was that process like first off so I I spent about a year seriously um, deliberating in my own head and and talking to a very good friend of mine 
about how I was going to leave, if I was going to leave, if I was going to leave the quote right way, which is, you know, you go and you say, I want to leave. You go to what's called, you know, the ethics officer or the chaplain mm. and you go, I want to leave. And so they, they put you on this little routing form, which is just something that has steps that you follow for somebody who wants to leave. And actually the end, the end product they're trying to get from that, from those steps is somebody who doesn't want to leave. So they're going to do anything they possibly can to change your mind, um, you know, interrogate you about what you've done that's bad. And, and because you're basically told, and there's policy that says anyone who wants to leave from an organization or a group or whatever situation, um, they've done bad things to that group or that person or whatever the, the, the scenario is. And that's why they want to go because they've done bad things. And so they're trying to stop themselves from doing more bad things. And so they just want to leave. And that's very abbreviated, but that's, that's basically what it is. So I didn't want to go that route. I never told anybody my entire time I was in the Sea Org that I was having any doubts questions that I was thinking about maybe leaving. I never got into that because I never wanted to go the route of, okay, well, you need to get a security check now. You need, you're going to get interrogated as to what you've been up to and go through that whole thing. And they're just going to try to convince you to stay. So I never wanted to go that route. So I didn't, I didn't talk about it with anybody there. So then fast forward to when I was in, I was in Columbus, which is a very unusual situation for a Sea Org member, unless you are specifically sent on a project or a mission, or you're what's called a network person where you're a Sea Org member and you're in sort of a lower, lower organization to represent the Sea Org in some capacity, whether it's finance or whatever program or whatever. So this was very unusual where there was about 100 Sea Org members who were sent to Columbus, um, Columbus, the Columbus organization, because all of the renovations were done for months and months, maybe even a year. And the org was ready to open and they couldn't open it because they didn't have the staff and they didn't have the staff because their field is very small. And if they recruited everybody in their field and a few more, they wouldn't have any public left to do any courses. So, <laughs> so this was not working. And at the same time, uh, this was, this was um, a little bit after the whole, like what people sometimes refer to the chase wave, which I didn't, I never heard that term until I came out of Scientology. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what do you mean chase wave? So this was this whole financial um, fraud and credit card fraud and this whole thing that people were heavily involved in and a lot of the orgs were involved in and that that carried over into practically everything that was being done in the orgs um especially with sea org members and so when they when the whole financial stuff blew up um things also blew up as far as the projects that they had sent out to various orgs to build them up to recruit more staff to do like all this thing to either all these things to either either op be able to open the org or to really get like a new newly opened org going they pulled out all those people all of them from all over the world and those are the uh missionaries they call them the missionaries because when you do a a, a project in this you're going to some org it's called a, a mission right so you're a missionary yes. so they pulled all those people out and so they were left with nobody recruiting <laughs> for these orgs that were supposed to open so then when it came time to like the next orgs were ready to open because the renovations were still going on that was kansas city and um, columbus then they were like um we can't open we don't have enough staff we have like less than 10 staff so they they selected 100 people about 100 staff from um a few of the Sea Org bases in LA, um, some in, in New York. There's a there's a continent there's a continental office in New York. They took some people from there. Some people were even from Flag. They took people from all over the place so that they could open up these orgs. And I was one of those people. <laughs> and I came from LA, and I was very happy to get out of LA, and because I'd been there for 25 years and in the same square, you know, one mile, <laughs> two mile, never 
really went anywhere. I was I yeah. was sick of it and spent all my time in a building working, you know, um, ridiculous hours. And that's got a, a lot of other stories connected to it. But <laughs> but for this one, yeah. So I had gone to Columbus and, and that was right before the pandemic. That was October um, 2019. And so we opened the org. We were kind of rolling and and then the pandemic hit and everybody had to go. The org closed, except they left like they left a few staff in the org to like for security purposes. There's like six staff or something who lived in the org for those months that the org was closed down. And um, and then the rest of us went to the apartments where we were living and we had to stay there and we couldn't go to anyone else's apartment. We couldn't really interact with each other because of the whole, you know, social distancing masks, the whole shebang. Right. Yeah. So then I ended up with a lot of free time, <laughs> which was really odd after being in New York for 26 years. Yeah. But this is the thing you're still expected to commit your life to Scientology, even right. though you can't go out and do stuff. Right? right. They're still asking you to do things from home. Right. Yeah, was it call in or book sales? Or something yeah, we were doing, yeah. we were, I mean, there was a lot of people who were, who were, who were um, um, doing donations, like mm. dredging for donations over the phone for, for IAS international association of Scientology for, various services because it was like well once the org opens you're going to want to be on service right away and there was a lot of um getting the public onto extension courses which are just these courses that you read a book at home and you do a little mm -hmm. course so that's how that's how that went and then yeah there was book selling like we had a whole list of of people um and numbers and emails and addresses and things that we would write to sure so i was doing a lot of that and then i was also doing some research on um like social media type stuff because even though like this is so stupid so the so the org has a facebook page right but um sea org members aren't allowed to be on facebook you're not even allowed to like look at facebook you can practically like not even like think about facebook right so there was one person in the org who was the dsa who had access to the Facebook page, but I say just for those of you watching DSA's director of special affairs. So right. OSA, which we all know, looking after the protecting the image of Scientology and PR and all of this, every org in the city has a DSA director of special affairs. Who's like the OSA representative. Right. And so they're in charge of the PR and um, you know, the dirty tricks and all of that specific right. to that org in that local area. Right. Yeah, and some of them have more than one person. In the, yes. They have yeah. like a deputy or they have someone who works in PR. Yeah, there's more than one in London, for example. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. So then that was the person who, who that was the only person who had access to, to the Facebook mm -hmm. page. And it wasn't, it wasn't her really her job to do like promotion and whatever, right? Although she would help with it however she could. But I was in charge of promotion. I was in Division 6, which is the public division. And I was I was in charge of promotion. So I was like... I wanted to somehow use this to do more promotion. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, so I need to get access to it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make bogus Facebook account just so I can see other orgs, Facebook accounts. Right. Oh, and I, I specifically looked at the London one, by the way. I don't know if I ever told yeah. you that. No, I don't think you did, but yeah, we were specifically because I heard some other people were talking about the London or like I think the DSA even was talking about the London or Facebook yeah, and how we, cool it was. And I yeah, was like, I'm we gonna were see this. We were, I think, the first or if not one of the first, definitely orgs to do our own social media thing. And that was a big campaign that I started with Charlie Wackley of like how we should use social media to sell yeah. more books. And that was yeah. kind of that was my little, you know. That was the one thing I was proud of doing in Scientology of like, you know, using social media and changing the way we're doing it. And we were yeah. kind of allowed to do it when we weren't really meant to and so on. And there's a whole story behind that. But but you were looking at this and seeing other orgs. Yeah, doing so, it so yeah, I was looking I... at that. And, then, and yeah. then after about a week of having that, I didn't tell anybody that I did that because I figured I'd be in trouble. Mm. But later, like I was like, OK, we're going to be going back in the org and I won't have it then. I just want to get some idea. Right. So then about a week after I had that, I was like, hey. I could find some old friends of mine. And so I went about trying to find, you know, people that I'd known like many, many years earlier before I even, uh, before I, I got heavily involved in Scientology even, which is, which was like, you know, 1992. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> probably before you were born, right? Yeah, that was born? yeah, 95. Yeah. 95, yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, also, Chris, I see your comment and I will answer that very so shortly. People in the comments, if you ask a question or whatever, I am starring them as we go through and I will bring them up um, later on when they're when they're, or when they're relevant. And, and at the end, we'll do a bit of a and a So I'm not ignoring the chat. I'm starring them. We'll pick yeah, them we'll up definitely we'll, we'll definitely answer people's questions. I yeah, like it when people sure. ask questions. It's always yes. interesting. Yeah, it's good. But OK, so you were doing then, this yeah. promo stuff. You had a secret Facebook account and. Yeah. You kind of saw what other orgs were doing and you were like, yeah. I, you know. So then I found a friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. So then I found a friend of mine, very good friend of mine from much earlier and um, started talking to him and connected with him and texted with him and talked to him on the phone. And, and um, I, I at first, I at first was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm still, in, I'm in this religious fraternity and I love it and blah, blah, blah. Like trying to, even though I wasn't very happy. I was trying to like say that I was and whatever. Yeah. So, so then it's, 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 it's kind of a long story what, what happened, but, but we stayed, we stayed in very close connection for a while. And he was, he was basically helping me and being my sounding board for everything I was thinking and feeling. And, and then at, 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 at a point actually early on was when, they took my phone and I got really upset about that. And I was like, this is bullshit. And, and then at that point was then I decided to tell him that that had happened. And cause I wanted to see what his reaction would be. And he was just incredulous. He was like, Oh yeah, they took your, okay. That's, is it your personal property or is it theirs? And anyway, that just opened up a whole thing of like, I don't like this anymore. I want to get out, but I'm not sure if I want to get out, but it's, it's all this like, Ugh. Like, what do mm -hmm. I do type thing? So that went on for about a year. And at some point I actually found, I saw online, um, I think because I, I, I saw some videos of Mark Headley's and then that led me to kind of glance at the, at the, uh, the Aftermath Foundation site, which I was like, no, I don't want anything to do with that. And I just kind of forgot about it. I was like, no, I'm not interested. In how, how did you come across the aftermath foundation in the first place like did you was it through google search Have you heard about them before like how did that happen i'm pretty sure that when i first saw it was when was because i had been watching interviews of mark headley right and and then i happened to see that he was connected to the to the aftermath foundation okay. i just briefly glanced at it but that wasn't really what got me interested i just knew that that was a thing, right? I was like, no, I, I like, I wasn't even thinking of talking to any of these people because you have to understand which you understand, but for the people watching or listening, um, when you're in, when you're really in Scientology and you believe in it, and especially when you're in the Sea Org and you believe in what you're doing and you think that you're doing this amazing mission to help all mankind and the world kind of the last thing you're going to do is you're going to talk to someone who is an ex Scientologist, ex Sea Org member, somebody who blew, somebody who's like speaking against Scientology. You're just like, those are like the very worst people you can think of talking to. Yeah. So my friend that I was talking to for a year, he'd never been in Scientology. He, he didn't have anything to do with it. The only, the only thing he had to do with it was that he knew me and he knew that I was involved in it. So to that degree, he was a little bit familiar with what it was at least, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like he, he wasn't speaking the same way that a former Scientologist or a former Sea Org member is going to speak. So he was, it was kind of a, a very safe person for me to talk to because I didn't feel at that time. And I still don't that it was like some ulterior motive, you know, someone who's, who's uh, uh, ex Seorg or blue from the Seorg or blue from Scientology or whatever. To me, being a Scientologist, I would kind of feel like, oh, well, you're just trying to get me to, to get out of Scientology. And that's yeah. all you want. You just want people out of Scientology. You just want to destroy Scientology. Yeah, because Scientology paint this picture that if you yeah. leave, if you blow from the seal, you're a suppressive person. That not only to a Scientology, but if you're a suppressive person, you you actively want to destroy other people's lives. You don't want other people to succeed in life. You want to get in their way of success and like 
doing well and you're not a good person. And yeah. so when you're getting this picture painted in your head, you know, if you're maybe doubting or questioning certain things in Scientology, but you haven't decided you want to leave, you're just kind of questioning things in your head. The last person you're going to talk to is someone who is an outwardly spoken critic right. that's making videos that are attacking Scientology because you're going to think they're just going to try and get me to leave. And I don't want to leave. I just have some questions. Yeah. And so that's where your your brain is at in that point in time. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and for me, and then I also started watching. um I started watching a lot of um, videos just about other people's stories. And then I came across a really good video that, that Aaron, Aaron had done about Scientology and the matrix. <laughs> I don't know if you, did you ever see that one, Alex? I don't think I it's did. It's really no. cool. You should see okay. it. Look up Scientology and the matrix on Aaron's channel. It's fantastic. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good analogy. That's really cool. And that was also, I think that was also the first time that I had heard that there were no um, OT levels, written up OT levels after OT8. Because, of course, you don't hear that when you're in mm -hmm. Scientology in, in the Sea Org. Yeah. And when I heard that, I was like, I can't believe I just heard this. I'm like, I'm like listening to really like squirrel stuff here. And I was like, I was a little bit scared, right? Like, oh, what's going to happen to me? Yeah. Am I going to like get sick or something? Or if yeah. anyone finds out, I'm going to be in such trouble. But then the more I, the more I listened to and the more I saw people's videos, I'm just like, okay, this is, I, 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 I need to, I need to get out of this. And especially when I saw, I saw the, uh, oh yeah, Chris, Chris Shelton did this video on the truth rundown. And that was very helpful for me. Cause I was like, that was the point where I decided I didn't want to do Scientology anymore. Right. Because before that, I was kind of like, okay, well, I want to leave the Sea Org, but I still want to be a Scientologist. I still want to go up the bridge and all this. But then I saw this video and I'm like, I never want to do that. That is total, that's gaslighting. I never, right. I never want to do that. And for me to say or to have the idea or the thought that, that there was some part of Scientology that I never wanted to do, that's like, okay, I need to, that I, I'm done with this. That's a huge point as well, because in Scientology, you learn that Scientology is the only way of helping yourself, helping humanity. And if it's done correctly, it will work 100 percent of the time. And if there is anything that you come across that you don't agree with, it's because you haven't understood it properly or you have, you know, bad intentions or, you know, yeah. um, overt yeah. and withholds and good words and. Yeah, exactly. So when you come across this thing and you're like, no, I actually don't want to do that. That's huge because that has planted the seed in your head that yeah. Scientology isn't necessarily 100 percent correct. There's something here that you're hearing about that you're yeah. like, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Or, and... there's some, or if there's something that you don't want to be involved in as far as like the technology, quote unquote, of Scientology, it's like that really makes you think because you're like, OK, either. Because it's it's kind of like an all or nothing. Either you agree and you believe in all of Scientology, or you don't. And if you don't, then you're you're against it, or you're not a Scientologist, yeah. or whatever. So yeah, exactly. So that was a real turning point for me. I think there's a there's a really key thing here as well that I want to highlight is the difference, like the the journey that your mind goes on, right? Leaving staff, leaving the Sea Org. Um, a lot of people when they do that aren't ready to get rid of Scientology. They still yeah. want to, they still believe in Scientology. Right. They still want to do Scientology and don't want to chuck their faith in the bin. They just don't want to live the life of a SEAL member because it's right. horrible and abusive or whatever. So that's one step that a lot of people go on of like, I want to leave the SEAL, but I don't want to leave Scientology. And then there's a the step of leaving Scientology. Some people become independent Scientologists and like everyone's recovery in this journey is different. Um, but just just bring it back to the Aftermath Foundation for yourself. Like you've, you're you watching these videos, you're hearing these things and yeah. um, you then contact the Aftermath Foundation and they help you, right? Okay, so this is how this went. Yeah, sorry, I was going to get back to the Aftermath Foundation. Yeah, no, sorry, go on. Go no, on. no, it's okay. Um, so... Yeah, so I'm watching all these videos. I'm I'm talking to my friend like every single day, and getting his take on things. And and he also um, he also like 
talked about human trafficking and talked about different like abusive relationship type situations and kind of compare. And I was able to like compare that to like what was happening to me and what had happened to me and what I had experienced. And so he was kind of, he was thinking of, okay, how could he help me get out? Um, Cause he had limited resources as far as like just helping me leave and whatever. And then I was also in a situation where, I was disconnected from my mother, my sister, and I had been for 12 years and I was not ready to just jump back into that relationship yet. Um, Cause that was a little bit, that was a little bit overwhelming for me. Cause I was, I was already like trying to make this major change and, and major shift in my thinking of like just leaving Scientology. And then to add that onto, to add that sort of relationship onto that right away. And like, kind of There's a lot to them. take yeah. on right yeah so i didn't want to do that specifically so then i didn't really have anybody else who i was going to go to so i was like what do i do so then he had found that he had also found the aftermath foundation online and he suggested that that i i use this this resource and at first i was like no i don't want to talk to them they're just a bunch of sps they're just a bunch of anti scientologists and i don't want to talk to them so then I thought about it more and I was just like, okay, I should at least, I should at least like see what they have to offer. And he was also like, well, why don't we just at least ask them what they have to offer? And for me, it was like, you know, just watching the videos and like, you know, watching Chris's videos and uh, like some of Mark's interviews and Aaron's stuff. For me, that was different from, you know, actually talking to one of them because, okay, I'm just watching a video that somebody made okay, now I'm going to take the next step and talk to this like horrible SP. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I yeah. was like, I was really scared. I'm like, oh, I don't think I can do that. No, I think these, no, I can't do it. So then that took a little while to overcome. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then he, my friend just kept talking to me and being like, you know, I really think we should check out these, these resources. And I was like, okay, fine. And then I asked him to write an email <laughs> to the aftermath foundation mm -hmm. and basically um tell them about me but not tell them my name or where i was or anything because i was like scared they're gonna like you know come and try to talk Track to me or me something down. i don't know yeah. what i was thinking exactly but i was like yeah what if they try to contact me and i'm like all of a sudden i'm in trouble because there's like some sp trying to call me at the org or something i didn't really think that but mm -hmm. i was like I don't want them to know but your I'm... mind does go to those places of like what if what if this happens what yeah. if this happens and you also you're still in the seal because you don't want to get found out and you exactly. want to protect yourself because exactly. all it takes is for someone to call or text at the wrong time and your phone goes off and your seniors there and goes who's that yeah. messaging you or why are they messaging you and yeah. suddenly they figured it all out and you're pulled into a set check and you're in trouble so it's all about discretion and being careful but this um this mindset of worrying and fear um, isn't just something that it happens when you're currently in Scientology. Like even I had an, an sort of an element of this when I was going through my recovery because I left, I was kicked out of Scientology on off staff in 2014, but I was still considering myself a Scientologist for a couple of years afterwards. And so 2016-ish is when I kind of draw the line of wasn't really doing any Scientology anymore. But it wasn't until last year, 2022, that I started thinking about it and doing the recovery. And even then, watching videos for several months on YouTube and thinking, I feel like I need to speak to a former Scientologist. I still had those reservations of yeah. like speaking to Chris Shelton or anyone else. Like, mm, I don't want to speak to this person or I don't want to speak to this person because I feel like they're just going to like bash Scientology or they're just going to yeah. try and make me feel this way. And, you know even though I wasn't a Scientologist and hadn't been in an org for many years, I was still worried about contacting them because in my head it was like, well, if I ever do want to go back because I've spoken to this person, it's going to make it a lot more difficult. Yeah. So I was reserved and really, you know, careful. And it took me a long time to just in my head, get to the place where I'm okay with emailing Chris Shelton to say, Hey man, can I talk to you? <laughs> which sounds really stupid, but it's a big thing in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Like I was afraid to talk to Mike Rinder. And like I, when I saw he was a part of the aftermath pension in one game, like I'm not talking to Mike Rinder. That's He's scary. Like the, the biggest <laughs> SP like, there is. Right. Me, right. Yeah. yeah. So I looked at the various people that were in it and I saw that, you know, Aaron and I knew a little bit about him from his videos. And then I saw Mark and I knew a little bit about him from his videos. And I really liked, 
I really liked like, uh, I don't know how to say it, his like quality of communication and his videos and stuff and his sense of humor. I really like, I really like that. So, and then I looked at, <laughs> this is funny because, because um, actually Scientology inadvertently helped me choose to talk to Mark Headley because they make these, these hate videos on the Stanley yes. website, right? So they have all these videos of him and all these stories of him and Claire and how horrible they are, right? And they had this one where they were talking about how how he like embezzled money and stole all this money from the church and, and did all this financial like stuff. And I saw that and I read about that and I'm like, I bet that's blown way out of proportion. I bet, I bet he had something and it was some loophole where he didn't like do a purchase order for something or he didn't get something authorized for the tax or something, because I've experienced that on, on financial stuff where it's like, yeah, you committed financial irregularities. And I was like, and my fan of financial irregularity, you know what it was? It was running book ads <laughs> for the org to sell books with, yeah approved funds yeah yeah and because it you just did it in the wrong way or something yeah it, no it wasn't specifically oh this is for the nani campaign and this is specifically from the nani campaign so it was during the pandemic when the org was shut down and i was trying to get books sold and so i ran these ads and i got in so much trouble and i'm like this is total bullshit so when i saw that on his on these hate videos i was like i bet that's blown way out of proportion okay i want to talk to this guy yeah so then, like I said, my my friend emailed them. And at first, this is actually really funny. At first, Aaron, Aaron was the one who answered, we found out later. And and Aaron was like, he thought it was it was just a, a bullshit story or somebody pulling his leg or somebody like it, he thought it was totally fake because he was like, So there's a, a non-scientologist who has a friend who's a Sea Org member who's in the Sea Org. And talking to this person, talking to this non-Scientologist about leaving the Sea Org. Yeah, that sounds And like in that. Columbus as well, like not in, in one of the Columbus. big Sea Org bases. It's, exactly. it's a weird story. <laughs> like you think, mm, this sounds a bit fishy. Yeah, yeah. But but they ultimately helped you land on your feet, right? Like what are the yeah, sort of so... things that the aftermath did do for you? when? <clears throat> okay, so... These are, I just have to put in a plug, like personally and, and like publicly for the foundation itself and personally for the people in it, because every one of these people I've, I either, I either, I either knew from, from earlier, like I knew my, I sort of knew Mike Rinder. I knew who he was. I sort of knew who Mark and Claire were. I kind of remembered Aaron and I, de and I knew, I, I knew Christy. Mark's wife, I'm sorry, Mark's wife, Mike's wife, <laughs> when she was in the Sea Org, I knew her. So all these people were a little bit familiar to me already. But I just want to say, and then there's Lewis. Oh, Lewis is the president. I've never met him before, so I didn't hear of him, but I, I've spoken to him before. Um, like since then, I was walking to him. So the only the only person I haven't talked to from, from the foundation is their lawyer, Ray Jeffrey, but I know that he's done a lot of really good cases against Scientology representing people who are suing and whatever done a really good job on there. And I just want to say that every one of these people, they're the most caring, uh, uh, resourceful, like uh, solution oriented <laughs> people that I, that I've met, especially the headlays are just fantastic. They're, they're personal friends of mine now, very, very good friends. And they just went above and beyond what I expected and when I first spoke to Mark, I kind of told, I told him what was going on and he's like, okay, so you just got to let us know what you need. Like, what do you need? Do you need a phone? Do you need, you know, a plane ticket, a train ticket? Do you need someone to pick you up from somewhere? It's like, whatever you need. And whenever you want to leave, we can do that. Like somebody can pick you up right now, practically, if you want and take you someplace or, or we can get a plane ticket for you anywhere you want to go. And before I spoke to him, I was kind of like, okay, they're probably going to say like, okay, so when you go, this is what you do type thing. Like you're going to get a plane ticket to this place. You're going to stay here. You're going to, I thought it was going to be more like structured. Mm. And that was another thing I was kind of afraid of. Cause I was like, I don't want to like be, I don't want to go from being controlled in one group to, to being controlled. To another one. Another right. Group. Yeah. 
and and I don't even really know where I want to go <laughs> and yeah. what I want to do. So I, it's it was really like I don't know what to do. But he but he was just like, what do you need? Where do you want to go? Do you know where you want to go? Do you know when you want to go? And just let us know. And I was like, okay, this is cool. So I talked to him for a little while. Then I texted with him, and then and then Aaron emailed me, and I started really talking to him. And then at first I was like, okay, I think I'm going to be ready to go in like a month. And then, and then I changed it to, I left six days later. <laughs> and what happened was they, um, Claire does a lot of the, the, the logistic type stuff for this kind of thing. And she's, sure. she's really, really bright and smart about this kind of mm. stuff. So, um, and then they have volunteers all over the place and, it's they have volunteers in like every single place. So they were, they got a volunteer in Columbus and very nice lady who I'm actually friends with now on Facebook. And she just had a baby. She's it's really cute. Oh, wow. So um, she picked me up. Um, they sent me a, they sent me a boarding pass. Actually, Claire sent me the boarding pass the day before I left. Cause I, Oh, sorry. Backing up when they're like, okay, well, where do you want to go? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> So then Aaron suggested, he's like, well, why don't we send you somewhere so you can chill out and kind of decide what you want to do. And so you can just get out of and decompress a bit, right, right away and yeah. decompress and wherever you want to go. Like, I don't know, for example, do you like the mountains or do you like the beach? I'm like, I like the mountains. And so that's how I ended up in Colorado with the headlights. Nice. nice. So and, they got you out of there. They picked you yeah. up and they. Yeah. A volunteer the picked me up. I went to the, uh, I risked going to the apartments to finish packing. Wow. And she drove, she drove me to the apartments. I quickly finished packing in like 20 minutes and she took my suitcases out. And then I just calmly walked out of the apartment and got in the car and we drove to the airport and nobody saw me. So, which is good. <laughs> so then, yeah. So then I flew to Colorado, which was a very good decision because it's a really, it's, it's, it's a really beautiful place. It's like right next to the Rockies, right, right. Uh, like half an hour from Denver or so I went to Castle Rock and at first I was in a hotel and I was all nervous about being around people I didn't know and whatever. And then I met Claire and she's fantastic. And, and then I met Mark and then they were like, they were like, well, we can, it's okay if you want to stay in a hotel for now, but um, we might want to, you know, use the resources, use that money some other way for you. So, you know, open invitation to stay in our guest room. So I stayed in their guest room for, uh, couple weeks or a week or so and then I actually ended up um because I called my grandmother she was the only other person I was in contact with from my family so I called her and told her that I had left and she was all she was very happy and then she's like oh your your cousin's getting married this weekend too bad you can't come and I was like hmm I kind of thought about it and then I talked to Claire and she's like you can go you can totally go we'll get you a plane ticket so so I so I flew up to Minnesota and I spent and I went to my cousin's wedding. I'd seen family I hadn't seen in, you know, 25, 30 years and saw all these people I'd seen when I was like my cousins were like six when I last saw them. And now they have kids, which was great. And I spent like six weeks up there. And then I went to um, I went to see my mom, which was also very good. I went on her birthday, actually, to see her and my sister in Portland. And, and the, uh, the foundation handled all this, like Claire got me a plane ticket whenever I wanted to go. And she's like open-ended when you want to come back, like, no, like there was no, like, this is what you need to do, or this is what you should do. There was nobody like trying to run my life, which is mm -hmm. very different. There was yeah. just people who were fast becoming friends, giving me really good advice and saying, we'll help you with whatever you need. Yeah. And then when I came back, I, so I, I went and visited family, like I said, and then I came back I went back to Colorado and, and then right away, Claire was helping me, you know, I was practicing driving. I'd never learned how to drive. And she personally taught me how to drive. <laughs> and I went Amazing. to driving school a little bit. And then the foundation got me a car, um, like paid for the car and everything. Um, we found an apartment that I liked and, they helped me with like the first few months of rent 
And then I found a job and I started taking over like all my own expenses. And it was, it was just, it was very smooth and very like whatever you need, like what do you need to get started in life? Yeah. And like for me, I'm like, you know, never held an outside job before. So that was interesting doing a couple of job interviews and, you know, finally find, finding something. And then learning how to drive was really interesting, especially going on the freeway. <laughs> I think it's, it's these little things that people don't realize, I think, in their minds who haven't been in Scientology in the Sea Org is that when you're in the Sea Org, especially for such a long period of time, um, little things like this, like learning how to drive or, you know, yeah. being OK with paying, like figuring out how to pay your own bills yeah. and like how no to grocery shopping. Your- <laughs> Yeah, how to cook food because you yeah. have all your food cooked for you in the seal. Like, oh, actually, I things... was lucky. I worked in the kitchen for 12 Well, you years. worked in the galley, so, so you would have been all right with that. But little things yeah. like this that people don't realize when you're in the seal, you don't you don't have that exposure to that in your life. So these things that kind of sound really rudimentary and basic in life that most people have have done or know how to do. If you've been in the Sea Org a long time, you 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 don't. You just literally don't. It's kind of like starting afresh. And when you leave, all of these things can all add up, not just in expense, but in pressure and you can become yeah. overwhelmed yeah. that, oh, my God, I need to know how to I can't get anywhere. I need to drive. I need to learn how to. Yeah, cook. You, you, to and, and plus, you don't even know what you don't know. Mm, it's like exactly. Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, you have to have car insurance. But what does that mean? Car insurance. Okay. Yeah. What kind so, of insurance? What do I do? Yeah, precisely. So the Aftermath Foundation is really good at helping you land on your feet in this way and giving you the financial resources that you need and getting you getting you to a place where you land on your feet. Yeah. Um, but what the Aftermath Foundation is not is it's not a mental health charity, right? They don't provide right. therapy or right. resources in that way. Um, and they also they exist to help people leave and escape Scientology. But if you were you know, like myself, for example, out of Scientology for a long period of time, I don't need help landing on my feet, but I might need to just talk to someone or whatever. That's not really something the Aftermath Foundation do. And I wanted to talk before I um, have the big reveal that's coming soon about what I've been working on. um, I want to talk to you a bit about that process mentally in your mind, because everyone is different. Everyone's recovery is different, but there are similarities um, that we all that we've all got in common with recovery but that yeah. mindset that process of getting your mind out of Scientology right. is a whole different thing right and some people need to go to, to therapists some people don't and they just want to talk to someone what was that journey like for you in your head whilst your the aftermath has given you this stuff to mean you don't need to worry about these things yeah that must have given you a lot of freedom and space in your head to think things over and process yeah exactly what- yeah and and i continued watching watching and listening to all these different videos and people's stories and just hearing other people's journey on what happened to them and how they kind of got out of it and how they recovered and that helped me quite a bit and also several times I listened to the audiobook of Steve Hassan's um, combating cult mind, mind control, control yeah. which was fantastic. I think I've listened to that three times now just because it's it's so good. Sure. And then and then I stumbled upon, you know, there's other people that have written books. Jeff Hawkins is a wonderful writer. I have to say, I try to say it on every video I do and give him a give him a a, a plug for his books. I think he wrote three books he wrote uh he wrote Steve, the one on ethics right yeah, he wrote really leaving good. scientology he wrote one on his own story i forget the name of it now and then he wrote um yeah the the one on on ethics uh, mm. closing minds that was the best one and i've i've read that like several times now and that 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 goes over the whole the entire ethics book like chapter by chapter or section by section whatever sure. <clears throat> and breaks it down and like really dissects it and that helps a lot because the the ethics the ethics um information i don't want to call it technology that's what scientology calls it ethics tech right yeah but that is what really what keeps people in and what keeps them from leaving and what makes them think that they're doing something wrong by looking at other um information about scientology and makes them think they're just you know being an enemy of scientology if they do that and 
and things like that. And, and, and to really break that down and get that, like, like change your thinking on it is I think is very, very valuable. So I highly recommend mm. that book to anybody who's thinking of leaving or who just left and, you know, is being told they're out ethics or is thinking they're, they have something wrong with their ethical standards or <laughs> however you want to say that it's really, really helpful. There are some really key things that are helpful for everyone in different ways, right? Like everyone in their recovery needs and is looking for something different. It might be watching videos on YouTube and yeah. some people might relate to one YouTuber more than another in the way they present information or talk about it. Like everyone is going to relate to things and pick things up in different ways. Yeah. Um and watching videos is one thing. Education is really important. I found myself that the more I educated myself on um, the way Scientology works and the way it's applied and what it does psychologically to you, yeah. the more that helped me figure out in my head what happened to me and then come to terms with it. And the more I reading I did on actual Scientology policy, like I probably read, I wouldn't say more, but I did write, read a great deal of Scientology policy and tech and stuff after leaving um, in a great deal because I wanted to understand it more yeah. from an outsider's perspective than when yeah. I was in. And so all reading books, you know, watching videos, these are all things that are really helpful yeah. in that recovery, opening up your mind and changing your mindset, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also talking talking to people or talking to someone who I've had as an incredible resource who has never been involved in Scientology and is his only interest is in helping me personally and wouldn't have anything to do with any of this if I hadn't been involved or if I wasn't in it. And that's, if anybody, um, his name is John, that's the friend I've been talking about. And if anybody wants to see, he did an interview on Chris's channel and he told his side of the story sort of on like how he helped me get out. Which I didn't know that. That's fantastic. Valuable. Oh, you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. He did an interview. Oh, it's really okay. good. It's really good. And, and I really wanted him to do that because, because I think that would, that is helpful for people who are trying to help somebody get out and, and what to do and how to talk to them and what to talk about and maybe what not to talk about and like how to approach the whole thing because he he did it really really well and it's because he cared and he cared about me personally and that is really really helpful and then i i've stayed in <laughs> very close contact with him and all throughout the whole process of like leaving and after i left and it's like we were still talking and i still had that for lack of a better, better term, stable terminal. That's what you would say in, in Scientology. Yeah. yeah. I had that, that stable person who I could always speak to, um, who his only, his only uh, interest is it was in, in helping me. Yes. So that was yeah. really helpful. If you also have someone who you really trust, whether it's, you know, whether it's a family member or whatever, it's somebody who you can, who you can go to and just, tell what you're thinking or whatever yeah. without maybe without having to talk about about suppressive pop says which channel did Catherine say and it's chris oh, shelton's channel yeah, right chris shelton's channel and if okay. you search for um search for john christensen mm -hmm. he did an interview that's really okay good great i'll see if i can find that and i'll put i won't be able to do it while we're on stream but i'll add the link to the description oh, um, later on so that people yeah. watching us on replay can go and find that yeah. um but i think you're right talking to people helps you process it and um, the Aftermath Foundation, for example, is not in the business of trying to convince people to leave. If you contact the yeah, Aftermath that was Foundation. The other thing. That was the other thing. Let me, let me say yeah. that real quick, which is that I was afraid that once I started talking to them, they would just try to like talk me into going right away. Like they're trying mm -hmm. to get people out of Scientology and they're not trying to get people out of Scientology. They're trying to help people who want to leave. They're not yeah. trying to convince you to leave. If you don't want to go, then don't talk that's to fine them. and also if they help you leave and then you decide to go back to scientology that's also fine like that's your decision the yeah. aftermath foundation yeah. is not in the business of trying to convince you to you know stay or leave yeah. or whatever uh, unlike scientology who tries to convince you to stay or yeah. your eternity is at stake you know yeah. precisely <laughs> and i think yeah. 
all of these resources are, are really important. And um, for me, talking about my personal journey a little bit, like I had been out for a, a long period of time and was watching videos and I connected with some more than others. Um, you know, some people, everyone on SPTV has their own way of approaching the subject, yeah. which is great. The more people, the better, because that's more um views points of view and that's more ways people can relate to things and i related to some youtubers more than others and in different ways and you know i chose to speak to chris shelton first and then i spoke to others and it's like i i would look at videos that some people were doing oh you know i feel like they're kind of attacking scientology a bit more i'm not quite ready for that i you know this person's talking more about educating people and i'm like okay i'm, I'm down with that yeah. this person's interviewing people and i like hearing other people's stories for me the most important thing before I even reached out to anyone was just hearing other people's stories exactly. of what they've been through. Even if you're in the Sea Org in LA, I found it fascinating how many similarities there were be between that and my story on staff in London Org. Um, and that was really helpful for me. And I was kind of like, un like, you know, my brain was working through these things and I was kind of figuring things out in my head just from hearing people's stories and that's very much what i try and do with my channel is yeah. give people a platform to tell their story and i try not to judge or you know pass opinion or, or whatever I, I try and just ask questions and give people a space to do that because that's what really helped me um and i want to help other people in in the same way and yeah. you know you go to three different rabbit holes like a big one is l ron hubbard a lot of people well, in Scientology, you believe Elrond Hubbard is correct and true 100% of the time, and he's not a god, but he knows what he's talking about, and he's developed this great, wonderful thing, and there's a cult of personality definitely around him. And so a lot of uh, one thing a lot of people have to go through when leaving is coming to terms with and learning more about who um, Elrond Hubbard actually is or was and the truth about his life and how he you know, research certain things and maybe took bits from different practices here and there. And so everyone practices it in, um, everyone goes through this like recovery in a different way and what they need to hear is different. Um, and I think this leads on to what my big announcement is going to be. Um, talking to a lot of people and you know about this, Catherine, and this is why I wanted to bring you on to kind of say this, like, there's two things. So number one, I've been working, I don't know if you saw, I put a post up the other day, I'm doing a, a course in all of this spare time that I obviously have um, <laughs> on counselling skills, which is a level three qualification, which is for those of you in the UK is the same as an A-level. And it doesn't make me a qualified counsellor or therapist, but it does give me the tools to be able to deal with people in crisis and give me the, the basic skills on understanding how counseling works and how it can help people and hopefully will equip me to deal with people um who are going through this more um not professionally but in a better way um and the reason i'm doing that is because this big project i feel like i'm really drumming it up here i'm just going to show everyone <laughs> let me get it up um so this is very much not a finished project this is just the landing page which is what we've got for now so I've called it cause over life. And this here is the landing page. You can go to causeoverlife.org. And if anybody, a, a lot of people who, who've never, people who've been, who, who have been in Scientology will recognize that phrase cause over life. Um, because, and people who haven't, that's apparently what you reach after you finish OT7. OT, OT8, I thought it was, OT8, I thought it was the end phenomena of, of the OT I don't know, they OT keep changing levels. it. It used to be, I yeah. think it started off being OT3 and then it just keeps moving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the ultimate end phenomena of Scientology that you are supposedly get to this state when you finish the bridge to total freedom is cause over life, which basically means you are in complete control of your environment and your life and, and so on. So I found out. That, great, Alex. Thank you. So this is just the landing page. Yeah. As it says, it's as it says, just coming soon. And it says underneath, very small in very stupid white writing that you can't really read, <laughs> but it says resources and mental health support for people recovering from Scientology. Now, to give people a bit of um more information about what this means is 
it's not in competition or conflict with the Aftermath Foundation or any other support system that's out there. There are a lot of resources that do exist for people in their recovery journey. But yeah. I found, and a lot of people I've spoken to have found, you have to do a lot of digging to find the resources yeah. that are relevant to you, whether that's books to read, videos yeah. to watch, people to talk to, therapy, whatever. Um, and there are support groups like... Um, Yanya Lalich has a really good support group and like an online workshop type thing that she does. And these are all really good tools, but they're not really easily um, accessible for someone leaving Scientology. So the idea is this is going to be a hub of resources, of information, of help for people leaving Scientology and recovering. So it's not just people trying to escape and leave like the Aftermath Foundation help with. This is wherever you're at in your recovery process even if you've been out for 10 years, this is a website you can go to that gives you resources. It gives you books to read. It directs you to different websites and support yeah. groups. It gives you um, contacts that you could potentially reach out and speak to. Um, and the key thing here is I don't want to use the word matchmaking, but right now it's the closest thing <laughs> that I've got. It's a matchmaking service in that if you need help, you can contact Cause Over Life through the website and say, I need help. And then there'll be a form and it says, what do you need help with? Do yeah. you need professional mental health support? Do you need to speak to a therapist? Or do you just want to speak to another form of Scientologist that's not mental health support, but someone yeah. that just has been through something similar? Um, do you want someone to just listen to your story and maybe provide some books or resources that are relevant to, to your story? Yeah. Whatever it is, it's a hub, it's a matchmaking service. So we will put you in touch with a therapist or we'll put you in touch with a former Scientologist or whatever's relevant. So this is the idea. It's a hub. And if people are trying to escape and leave Scientology, we'll recommend the Aftermath Foundation, for example. You know, whatever the resource is, it's, it's a place that we can come together. Um, I just saw Selena here, peer support. Yeah, exactly. That's another thing, whether we can do online workshops and groups and things like this. It's just a hub for all of these things um, that we can pull together. Yeah, it's just um, fantastic. And I also saw someone here said, uh, I think I've lost it now, but oh, no, here it is. Um, will it be international? A hundred percent. A lot of the free resources on the website are just going to be downloads or links or yeah. whatever. So absolutely. And if you contact this website, absolutely, it will, it will connect you with whoever we, we can to help you um, with that. This is fantastic. I'm really excited. Thank you. <laughs> so this is the idea and this is where we're going with it. And it's going to be a little while before it's ready to go. But the idea is it's a landing place for people leaving Scientology uh, because that doesn't really exist. And that's what I want to do is help people in, in that way. And so my call out to you guys that are watching, I suppose, is if you want to get involved or help in any particular way, please email me hello at apostatealex.com um, and kind of say what you can offer. You know, are you happy? Again, this isn't the Aftermath Foundation in terms of I want people to volunteer picking people up from the airport and stuff, because that's what the Aftermath Foundation do. Yeah. This is more like, are you happy to, um, you know, you're a former Scientologist and you're happy to speak to someone if they need to speak to someone? Or are you a trained psychologist or therapist and you're happy to help people with your service and obviously it's not all free i'm hoping that we can at some point raise funds to help people cover the cost of therapy and this sort of thing um at this stage we're not there yet but we will get there i just want to kind of see what resources are available amongst us all and in the chat and amongst us former scientologists and really bring people together to this place to to help each yeah, other this is fantastic right? Um, I just see a super chat here, Lythander Grautlinger, thank you. Hi from Germany, Alex and Catherine, SPs from Europe, channels and watchers are tuning into owls, love, uh, turning into owls, yes, love every minute of SP TV, thank you for all you do. Well, oh, you already you. turned into an owl. You're like, I am a night owl. I'm in the US yeah. time now, like for a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> and um, just so that everyone knows, I am I pledged earlier this month to donate 100% of my YouTube earnings to Mike Rinder to help with his treatment. So any money that we get from Super Chats or ad revenue this month is going towards Mike Rinder. So oh, thank you, cool. Lythander, yeah. for, for helping yeah. with that. Um, suppressed person here. This is going to be an invaluable service and resource. Thank you. I think that's what I really want to do. There's going to be... 
<laughs> yeah, I love it. And so this is the thing is what we were talking about people being in different stages, you know, watching videos and maybe not ready to speak to someone. This is a place you can go and you can just go and read stuff, right? You can go and look at recommended books. You can go and watch videos and it will link to YouTube and so on. You don't have to contact us. And it's just yeah. giving people a space to yeah, find Yeah, and if you want to talk to need. somebody, you can. Like I, I had somebody contact me recently um I'm not going to say no, because he's not public yet. But I had somebody contact me recently who 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 I knew when I was I was still in Scientology and in the Sea Org. And it was really helpful to him to talk to someone just because he was like, he saw some of my, my interviews and he was like, oh my God, I know her. I was wondering where she went and what happened. And he saw my interviews and he was like, wow, I'd really like to talk to her. And then from talking to me, he also connected with a few other people he wanted to talk to in the in this community and he was really it was really helpful to him to talk to, to talk to various people cuz he's trying to recover too from the whole his sure. whole experience so Sure. And that's the thing is just having different options. And this counseling skills course I'm doing is one of those things that I feel is going to better equip me to be able to figure out what someone's going through and, and yeah. be able to appropriately offer the advice that I need to and say, you know, you need mental health support. So I'm going to recommend these are five therapists that know about Scientology that you might want to go and speak to and they can go yeah. and do that in their own time. Or you just want to speak to someone who what a former public or a former sealed member, someone from the US from the uk like get to know these people's stories intimately and personally yeah. to then be able to offer like a personalized tailored um not necessarily a plan but like um offer advice and resources that's going to help that particular person exactly. with whatever exactly. they need that's um fantastic. so that's the idea i'm going to bring it up that's, again here so, so that people can see it cause I over, love life. The over life how did I you think of like that, that? uh i don't know i was just going yeah. through different things i'd had a little brainstorming session of like what yeah. i could call it and what was appropriate and i liked the idea of cause over life because the whole service the whole website the resource is all about helping you become cause over your life and you're the one in control of your well, you're story, also like you're also a marketing pro so that helps that too that is what i do so <laughs> yeah. so i'm kind that's of yeah i found out recently it's like yeah oh, really you do this that's really cool <laughs> Absolutely. And um, someone mentioned here, um, I'm not going to bring it up, but someone mentioned a helpline. That is another thing that I'm looking at, you know, whether we can do a live chat service online or whether we do a helpline, you phone up and we can offer help that way. Wow. And these are all so things that I'm looking at. Here in the comments, Selena, can't, I can't pronounce her last yes, name. Yes, I've got it here. I worked on yeah. the helpline. Qualifying advice and guidance and trained advocate. That's that's fantastic, Selena. So people that's like great. you it would be a really great resource. And I would love to hear from you what sort of things you might be able to offer and what help you could give. So please, if you're interested in being involved in this in whatever capacity, email me. You can either email volunteer at causeoverlife.org or you can email me hello at apostatealex.com. Either one doesn't matter. I'll get them both. Email in and just say what it is you can offer, and hopefully I can bring people together, work on building this website, and we can build it over time to to help. Yeah, people. this is fantastic, and this is such a great community because people just people just like you know they have really good suggestions and they contribute a lot. Like if you see, you know, there's just people that do all sorts of all sorts of things in this community, and I, I really appreciate it. It's really cool. Yeah precisely um i think that's the thing is just bringing us all together and going look what resources do we have between us that we can all use yeah. to help each other so yeah, exactly. so that's the idea guys get in touch if you want to hear more about it um should we go through some of these chats that i've super sure. super starred whatever yeah. the word is yeah, um the first one so i'm going to go in time order the first one suppressive pops love the shirt, yeah, the shirt. Thank yeah you. it's a nice shirt it is a new shirt and I've definitely worn it to death because I really like it. It's my new one. So I'm wearing it a lot, but yeah, it's a good summer shirt because it's really thin and it's really hot yeah. in the UK at the moment. So thank you. Uh, yeah. um, Stephen Britton, interventions can be quite difficult. I suspect. I think this is in yeah. relation to your leaving and talking to your friend and that whole thing. Yeah. I mean, before that in, in 2007, my, my mom and my sister tried a little intervention, which, which didn't work. I was too, I was too deeply in, I was too into it. I was not 
connected with them enough and it just it it backfired and it made it actually like i ended up staying for a while after like 12 years after that 13 whatever mm-hmm. i can't count mm-hmm. um i grew up in a cult no <laughs> 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 i actually didn't i didn't join until i was like 15 so i can't sure. really say i grew up but <laughs> i haven't grown up <laughs> exactly um, but yeah, that it was it was very difficult on everybody. Yeah. But the good yeah. thing is, is that we're all connected again, and I'm out. So that's what that was. The exactly. Whole and congrats yeah, exactly. on getting out. <laughs> um, Chris Shelton had a question at the very beginning of the live stream, and we've taken our sweet time getting to it. I'm sorry, Chris. I don't even know if you're still there, but if you're watching on replay, here is the answer to your question. <laughs> Whatever happened to Charlie W? So for those of you who don't know. Charlie Wackley used to be my senior um, at the Church of Scientology in London, and he was um, he was the PES, the Public Executive Secretary. We would go out book selling together. We were very, very close. He was what I considered my best friend in Scientology. And essentially, he wanted to become a bit of an influencer in Scientology, and we together de- like came up with this plan of how to do a social media campaign and you know promote London Org. Um, I did a whole video on the whole story behind it. But to answer your question, Charlie has been promoted. He is now the DED, Deputy Executive Director of um, London Org. He is very much still in Scientology. They aren't doing so much on the social since the pandemic, um, but they are doing stuff every now and then. And it was only two or three weeks ago that he finally removed me on Facebook and blocked me on everything. So um, that's that's where we're at. He's very much still in. He is now on his OT levels. I believe he's OT5. Um, uh, along with his brother Jason, who you happen to know, yeah. Catherine, yeah, don't I you? Jason in LA. Who, yeah, who joined the Sea Org and went over to the States. So that's a little brief summary of what happened to Charlie. He's still in, still working for the yeah. church. He's and unfortunately, I don't think he's going to leave anytime soon or easily. I mean, there, he's like what third generation, yeah, third generation, third, yeah, third generation signed up. Yeah, and Charlie's dad, actually, Nick Wackley, is one of only a handful of British people that I know of who have been personally assaulted by David Miscavige himself. I spoke to um, at least two Sea Org members that were there at the time and have personally verified that it happened. Um, And so that's how close the Wackley family is to Scientology, um, especially here in the UK. So they're not going anywhere anytime soon. But Charlie, he was a is, great friend is, of mine. Is Peter he can call me still anytime. Alive? Uh, Peter who, sorry? Peter Wackley. I don't believe so. So their their dad is Nick Wackley. I believe Peter was the grandfather. I believe yeah. he's passed away. Nick has definitely passed away. Um, Nat, the mother, Nick? is still around. Nick yes, passed and, away? Yes, Nick passed away oh. in 2017, I believe, of cancer. Um, wow, interestingly. I didn't know that. I know his sister. Yes. His sister is, is in LA too, Caroline. She yes. used to be a really good friend of mine. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know that. That was her twin brother, actually. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He passed away a few years ago. Um, and uh, Nat Wackley, the mother, is still around. She's the test center. I see. She's in charge of the um, Tottenham Court Road Center, or she was last time I checked. Anyway, she's up OT levels as well now. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Um, let's go through some of these questions. Uh, Linda, comment, Alex, you need to teach. And Catherine yeah. is always a big ray of sunshine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do like teaching people. I like talking about things. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I'm good at explaining. Good at it. Thank you. You are. Um, Selena, when is the deadline to send submissions to the dating game? Has it passed already? I don't know if you know what about this, this, Catherine. I saw something on this briefly, and then I didn't have time to finish watching it, but it was really funny. And somebody, <laughs> somebody was, like, talking about you and people dating you, and you were sitting there looking very uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. So I didn't have time to finish it, and I didn't really understand what it was. So Ash, who I do a weekly podcast with um, called That's So Fucked Up, um, she's got interesting, a load of, actually. She's I actually awesome. I really like her. I, she's I saw so cool. One that you guys were doing when well, you guys yes. were talking about 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 the bridge, and she yes. was that was really interesting. Yeah, she's hilarious, and we do a weekly segment. And she got a bunch of comments from her podcast listeners saying that um, 
you know people were interested and stuff we had this whole discussion and ash was like i want to do a dating game show for you as a bit of fun and i was like okay fine so we're doing 2d or not 2d because 2d is second dynamic which is love sex and relationships um and we've also the degraded daughter dianette is vanessa she also came up with the hashtag pimp my apostate um so basically we're gonna do a fun little (laughs) show which is gonna be um a little fun but essentially I'd like to people... join you and ash sometime maybe not on the dating game thing a hundred percent you'll be more than welcome anytime <laughs> definitely let's talk about that off stream for sure okay cool. um but yeah the dating game people can submit to to be a part of the show and there isn't a deadline um we're just kind of seeing how it goes we've actually got quite a few submissions already more than i thought we would get um so i'm probably going to say within the next week this time next week let's say is the deadline um and then we're going to go through them all so that's the deadline. Um, degraded Daughters of Dianetics. Hey, Apostle Alex and Catherine. Oh, hey, like Vanessa and Alicia. They're awesome. Like That's them. another show you should go on, Catherine. I should yeah, introduce you. Yeah, I like you. those too. Yeah. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, okay, Expressive Pups again. Question. Before you knew about the Aftermath Foundation, what did you think you were going to do when you left? I bet you felt so lost. Such a great resource makes me think about past folk who blew, not Aftermath Foundation. So what I thought I was going to do when I left is I was going to, well, see, that's the thing. I didn't really know. I was like, I don't know where I want to go. I don't know where to go. I don't have any credit. (laughs) I don't know how to drive. I've never worked an outside job. That was part of the problem that I was having with deciding when and where to go was I don't, I don't have any resources and sure I could, I could have gone back um, to my mom, but what I was, but like I said, that was a very like emotionally hard thing to do at the time. And I wasn't ready for that. So I didn't know what to do. So I was just kind of like for several months, I was kind of like, I don't know. I want to go, but I don't know what to do. And I don't, have resources yeah. really so like you said earlier you don't know what you don't know right you yeah. know life in the sea org but you don't know what you need you don't know what you're missing yeah. you don't need no and that's what the aftermath foundation do is take away those stress and the questions so you've got your necessities so that you have the space to think about your life and where you want to go with it right exactly exactly yeah absolutely um max mir docker girl how much did you, say? How much you sleep after leaving a lot Yes. In fact, in fact, one of my favorite things to do is take random naps because <laughs> you can. Because in you the store, you're not going to do that. Yeah, even even for me on stuff like even now, right? I still have this thing in my head of like le- coming to terms of, and being okay with not having to work all the time, like yeah. just sitting down and watching a film or playing a game yeah. or like yeah. whatever. Like I still feel this internal like thing of like i don't feel like i'm relaxed i'm not okay with it like just being okay with not doing something or yeah. going to bed early or late or whatever you want yeah. that's part of the reason i live on pacific time is because i'm kind of like i can do what i want like and i'm enjoying it because yeah. you can't really do that yeah you know, inside yeah inside yeah exactly so yeah I've, I've i've slept a lot i actually had a lot of trouble sleeping at first i would wake up all the time in like the middle yeah. of the night which is basically been happening with me ever since I got surgery in 2020. I've been, I like automatically wake up in the middle of the night for like an hour and anyway, but I make up for it. So (laughs) that's actually, I just made a note here. Maybe sleep resources is something that we could offer on this website, right? Because sleep is so important and there's nightmares and trauma and, you know, I have my own insomnia and sleep issues. Like, you know, maybe that's a resource that would be helpful, like tips on healthy sleeping habits and yeah. things like this and CBT and other resources that might be useful. Um, oh, yeah. And this is what I mean. It's a hub of resources. We can always add to it and whatever people need or whatever they think they need help with, we can just add on there. Yeah. Um, degraded order Dynetics, this is so needed, yeah. 100%. And thank you for joining the chat. And I'm, I'm glad you think so. And I'm going to be speaking to more and more people about this. I've spoken to quite a few of you guys behind the scenes. And thank you for keeping the confidentiality and not spitting the beans. Um, <laughs> and I've, I've spoken to people like Catherine and Chris Shelton and so on about what this resource looks like and what you needed individually. And the better picture I have of people's personal circumstances, the more Um, comprehensive this can be so if you are someone that doesn't feel like you need this resource I would still like to hear from you because it would be interesting to hear like what what do you feel like 
is is needed for for others right so definitely get in touch mm -hmm. um and the last one i've got started here is you can buy alex a cup of coffee here yes so <laughs> i don't really i'm not doing this for the money that's not why i'm doing it however it does help support the channel and the reason i'm bringing it up here is this resource i'm going to set up separately if people want to donate to that to help with funding people's therapy and all this sort of stuff i need to go down the registered charity route and all of this but i'm bringing this up now because there are costs involved with running the website and getting it built and designed and all this sort of stuff yeah. so if you want to support me my channel and me doing this project buying me a coffee is a good way of doing that because that will help cover those costs so that's why i was going to bring that up um but if you want to donate money to a good cause the aftermath foundation is a great place to go mike rinder also needs a bit of support i know he said he's not massively stressed for the money aspect but he's also so taking donations um so yeah that's where one yeah, should go yeah, okay. uh, the best way of supporting always is liking sharing subscribing all of that stuff i bang on about it is true because the more you do that the more this video gets pushed out to other people and hopefully the more people we can help so Definitely. catherine is there anything you want to bring up or talk about before we draw um talking? i think that's i think we're good but i guess i just want to say again that everyone has their own story and everyone has their own um, um, needs and what helps them and everybody's different and um, there's so many there's 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 so many resources and there's so many um, people to talk to and and listen to and there's all these channels now and it's just whatever works for you like whatever helps you the most yeah. you know go with that and if and this is great that you're doing this website because then, you know, people can contact you or if anybody wants to talk to me or whatever, it's like, it's, it's mm -hmm. really easy. Or if, you know, if somebody wants more data on like the actual, like, like the, 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 the technology of Scientology and how it's used to control people, like, you know, Chris Shelton's channel is a wonderful resource or if, you know, there's just people that have done so much work on exposing um, Scientology abuses and exposing Scientology for what it is that there's there's just limitless information out there and one thing to note as well is that we're all we all have our own way of doing it and there's nothing wrong with that and I don't want to harp on about it but I do it is an important note to say that even if you don't agree with the way someone is doing something on YouTube or sharing the message or spreading it that you know you don't have to agree with it but you you know we've all got to support each other we're all helping each other and you know I think we've done a really good job recently of any disagreements or issues taking it privately rather than publicly and we are really good at that and we are united but there are always things that crop up right and um you know this is just a little reminder that we're all in this together we're all trying to do the same thing we're all trying to help each other even though we're doing it in different ways just i'm just encouraging everyone to remember that in the back of their minds that we're all on the same side here <laughs> and we're all trying to help and hopefully this resource is one of those things that can bring people together and you know you can have a list of the sptv channels you can have books and resources and you know it can help people realize that you you might resonate with the way someone is doing something more than another person and that's the beauty of it that's the beauty of having lots of people on sptv exactly so Catherine, thank you so much for joining me for this. And thank you, everyone, in the comments. And leave a comment down below as well, not just in the live chat, down below the video. Let me know what you think about this resource. I'm going to be releasing more information about it as time goes on, as I start to build it up. Um, but in the meantime, do get in touch if you want to be involved somehow, what you can offer, and we can make it a really nice community project. But for yes, now... Definitely. Thank you for joining us and hopefully we'll have Catherine on again soon because you are definitely a fan favorite. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.